Can you speak about winging it and when it's best to just go for it and when making a plan without the time to do so is the best course? Okay. Yeah, I can definitely talk about that. Um, Well, winging it is never the first choice. (laughs) And when, when you see people in the you know in the seal teams or in the military if they're winging something it's something that they've practiced a lot if they, it's something that they have planned broadly before and they've so much experience in that whatever that type of operation that they can actually get away with it right and a, mm-hmm. a good example if you take a jiu jitsu example like dean dean lister he can yeah. wing it in a match jeff glover can do that to a ridiculous level <laughs> yeah. of just winging it in competition mm-hmm. and just show up and just do what he does because he's got you know those guys at that high level have a mental fluidity that's going to be very helpful for them now there's other people that are very high level jiu jitsu players that don't wing it that are very much more methodical mm-hmm. and i'm sure there's some cases with both Jeff and Dean where they probably should have been more methodical. <laughs> mm. But, I mean, Jeff is straight up suicidal in many of his matches. I mean, mm. and that's what's beautiful is is that he moves so much so rapidly that people can't hang with him on yep. that level in yep. most cases. Um, so that's why he, he, he is winging it. Like every movement that he makes is winging it. But case in point. He puts himself in those situations all the time. You come to the gym and watch him train, he's letting people put him in the worst possible situations and figuring a way out of it. Mm. So the reason he can wing it in a competition is because he's, he's, right. he's put in pra- practice and discipline there in the background. And if you saw my SEAL t- platoon or task unit, we could wing it on operations all the time because we were prepared, because we knew each other so well, because we had standard operating procedures that covered so much of the things that would happen during an operation where we would be quote unquote winging it. So even though we're winging it, we're not really winging it because we right. have all these standard standard operating procedures in place that we didn't really need to plan. But if you have time to plan, then of course plan. Do, do as much planning as you can. Dig in and plan every detail that you can plan. Now, when it does come to planning, I think the most important part of a plan, the thing that makes a plan the most effective is its flexibility. And making a plan that is so flexible that when you do the actual operation and you come up against unexpected things which are absolutely going to happen, you have the flexibility, you have options, you have contingency plans to deal with. Now, so plan as much as you can, but the problem is with all that emphasis on planning, sometimes people become obsessed with planning. And they plan and they plan and they plan some more and they plan and they plan and they plan and they they don't wanna execute. Mm -hmm. And if they do execute, they execute late. They missed their opportunity. So that's why, that's why Patton said, I got this note written down here. Patton said, a good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week, right? That's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Just come up with a good plan. Don't come up with a perfect plan that takes you two weeks to come up with. That's not gonna help you. That's something you need to keep in the front of your mind. And that is especially applicable in a tactical decision that's being made in the field right something that is unfolding you see the enemy maneuvering you come up with a quick plan and you execute because every minute that you're waiting to execute the enemy is maneuvering on you that that lull in enemy fire that's not them retreating and running away no your mindset has to be that that's them maneuvering on you they're getting a better position they're setting up getting ready to crush you so don't let that happen Make a plan and go, and that comes back again to flexibility. If you come up with a good plan and you go, as that plan is being executed, you gotta pay attention. You gotta pay attention and watch how it's unfolding. Don't put the blinders on and you've got your plan and now we're gonna go and we're not gonna look around anymore. We're just gonna follow the plan. No, you have to be observant. You have to observe, orient, decide, and act the whole time. You can't just come up with a plan and stay on that track because when you come up with a fast plan, you're not gonna have 
thought about every single detail. And you don't know what the enemy is going to do anyways. Mm -hmm. You don't know what your competitor is going to do. You can't guarantee that. So when you see them start to react to your what you executed, now you got to be ready to react yourself mm -hmm. and get the, uh, the, the upper hand and take the offensive. So the, there's, an, there's, one more, <laughs> there's one more little dichotomy to this. And I'll just say it. Even though I'm saying you got to adapt your plan and you need to adjust as things happen, you also want to stick to your plan. Mm -hmm. Those things are completely the opposite of each other, right? I'm saying adapt and change your plan as needed, but I'm also telling you to stick to your plan. But for instance, if you rehearsed a, a or if you have a standard operating procedure for your order of patrol, so this is the, the order of, you know, the point man and it's, it's Jones and then Smith and then Washington, and then Jefferson, and that's your order patrol, right? Mm. And those guys are always marching in that order, and so we know each other, we know how to work together, we have fire team integrity, we have a standard operating procedure, and we're going to attack a target. And when we get closer to the target, we see that, hey, you know what, maybe it'd be better to move this guy over here and move this guy over here, and so let's, let's change our standard order of march, our standard patrolling order, because It'll, it'll be easier when we get to the target. Mm. Don't do that. Mm. Don't do that. You have your standard operating procedures for a reason. You have them, and when you start pulling yourself out of the standard operating procedures for no good reason, mm -hmm. that's going to come back and bite you. It's, it's not going to work out good. So be flexible. This is going to be an interesting statement. Be flexible. But stick to the plan, but be ready to adjust, but stick to the plan. And that's totally contradictory. And I know that, and I apologize, <laughs> but that is what leadership is. Leadership is balancing those dichotomies, and leadership is knowing when, hey, we've stayed with our standard operating procedure, we're going to hold through it through this little thing right here. You know, there's been a, there's a little small terrain feature we didn't expect. We could change our plan right now and adapt to that in the unlikely event that, or the, the small chance that something happens and it will be better for it at that moment. No, stay with your standard operating procedure. But then when something dramatic happens and you need to make a change, you do it aggressively, you do it dynamically. And then you continue to observe, orient, decide, and act, and st st keep beating the enemy inside the OODA loop. The OODA loop. That's it.